Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I'm coming at you with the Buddy Read tag. It was originated by Noah over at Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse, and I was tagged by Brian. Thank you, Brian, at Bookish. The title's pretty self-explanatory, so let's get right into it. We start with accountability. Do you like Buddy Reads? And I do. It's fascinating and fun to exchange ideas with somebody else about the things you're reading. And I, I learned so much. I gained a bunch of friends, I think, by doing buddy reads. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Here's the thing, though, is that I do not like doing more than what I want. And I need to be in the right mindset. And the past year and a half has been hard to find the right mindset. I've done maybe one or two, a few, not very many. I'm hoping to pick that back up again because I feel like I'm getting... I'm not going to say I'm over a slump because I don't want to jinx it, but I feel like I'm crawling my way out of a slump. Let's put it that way. So I'm looking forward to finally, finally getting back to Buddy Reads again, but again, one at a time. And I'm probably going to start with people I know best first and slowly work my way back up to bigger, more in-depth, more thinky Buddy Reads. Sharing. Is there an ideal group size for Buddy Reads? I don't think so. It depends a lot. It depends on the book. It depends on the people who are in it, how much free time everybody has, what the nature of the discussion is like. I read The Chrysanthemum and the Sword by Ruth Bennett with Unicorn over at the Bookish Land, and I will have links to everybody I mentioned down below. And it was a wonderful experience. And I say one-on-one, -on -one, even though it really ended up being two-on-two, -two, because uh, that book is about First of all, it was written during World War II and about the Japanese people and like a psychological look at them. But Bennett never went to Japan, never spoke to very many Japanese people at all. And it's very flawed. But what was amazing about that is that I had my views as an American, what I learned in school about World War II. She's Chinese, what she learned in school about World War II. My husband is Japanese, what he learned in school about World War II, and then her partner as well would pop in every now and then with something to say. And it was fascinating and deep when we went through one chapter at a time and just tore the thing apart, which is what it deserved, honestly. I did a full review of it. It's actually one of my most popular videos. I'll link that down below too. But so like that was a great experience that was nominally one-on-one -on -one with a little help from our partners. I've had great buddy reads with two or three other people and I think my largest was seven and that was great too because we checked in once a week and there were so many of us coming in with all these really super interesting wonderful ideas that we would be talking not only on Sunday which is the day we were set to meet but also Monday, Tuesday, sometimes into Wednesday continuing the conversation going, which was amazing. Duration. Are longer or shorter works better for buddy reads? And either one is fine. The only thing is if you have something super short, like a thin novella, that might only be one check-in, which is kind of sad. It's not so much the process, but you can turn it into something fun. I did a buddy read with Sean. It was One Fine Day by Molly Panter Downs. We did a video about it because what we did is we both read the book completely separately. We met up, it was pre-pandemic, we met up one day and filmed our reaction of hearing each other's like thoughts about it live and it was a lot of fun. I will leave a link down below and just to guess each other's reactions and how wrong we, I, was, are. And yeah, so even short works can be a fun buddy read. Community. There are many types of readers. Share a quote-unquote meeting of minds. And I'm going to go with my buddy read of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier that I read with Cynthia over at Book Whimsy and Shannon over at That's So Poe. We tend to have similar reading tastes, the three of us. And it was, but even within that, there's so much within Rebecca to pick apart and to think about with how the narrator is handled and just different ways of looking at the world and whether we forgived her naivete or if it was something that annoyed us to no end. And it was wonderful thinking it through with them. Perspectives. There are many types of readers share a difference in perspective. And I put together a buddy read for the autobiography of Malcolm X by Alex Haley. And we had an amazing group with an extremely wide range of perspectives. We had several different genders, several different like religions and political outlooks. We had people who had lived through that history, people who had were born way after that history, different levels of knowledge and religion, just everything. And it made it such a valuable 
wonderful discussion. I learned so much from y'all. And that was Brianna at Rad Reads, Cynthia at Book Whimsy, Brian at Bookish, Alba at Sariella, Jen at Remembered Reads, and Nashua S. And of course, like I said, links to everyone down below. And I cannot wait to read something with y'all again. That was such a wonderful experience. Challenges. Share a public or private challenge to read outside of your comfort zone. And if it were a private challenge, I wouldn't be telling ya. I don't really know how to answer my question. But I think for me right now, because the pandemic I should go back before the last year and a half or so, I would regularly try and read outside of my comfort zone, go into different even subgenres of romance that I normally wouldn't read or pick up and try different things to see if they still if they were working for me if all of a sudden or if they're still not working for me. But this last year and a half has been hard and I have gone right back to the comfort reads and that's fine. There's zero problem with that. So I think right now the way I'm reading outside of my comfort zone is through the booktube prize because there are a bunch of books on the nonfiction side that I would not pick up on my own. I mean, 900 page biographies, books about the awful things that happen to women in war, just all kinds of stuff where it's not something I would necessarily gravitate to. At the same time, after I read them, some of them, I fall absolutely in love with them. And I appreciate that. So for now, at least, I am going to stick to my book two prize and slowly expand out as my mental capacity expands oh so slowly as we're getting out of this thing not really getting out of it not yet in japan but we're headed there events what is your favorite reading event and why and you cannot limit me i love so many here on booktube my first and one of my still favorites is latin exathon i love all the creators they do such amazing an amazing job on all kinds of social media i love that they include an element where they raise money for a super worthy charity as they do the event and they just they put together a stellar readathon every year love that i also love nonfiction november seems to be given although recently because I'm doing the nonfiction side for the book two prize, I'm not quite as gung ho. Like some years I would do nothing but nonfiction. I don't know if that's going to happen this year, but it's such, it's another great event. And then I also love, well, recently it's been more of the mid month book bash that Doris is doing every month. Cause it's a great way to concentrate on my reading at a time where like before things get too late. So I'm not scrambling at the end of the month to finish stuff. And the queer lit readathon is my other absolute favorite. I do the June round every year. I'm going to look into maybe doing a weekend. They have week two weekends and they also have another week in December which usually falls during vlogmas. So I haven't done it yet but maybe someday. Can't stop a booktuber you have read the most with and that is easily Rachel over at Kalanati because we are reading the Foreigner series by CJ Terry together and we're up to like book seven or eight and I don't know if I've read with anyone else more than two or three times so clear winner there. Won't stop a booktuber that you haven't buddy read with but would like to and I'm not a fan of this question because I don't want to put pressure on anybody. I mean some of the people I would love to buddy read with don't really do buddy reads so it seems kind of silly to name them and like I said I don't do that many myself so and especially as I get back into them I'm going to start with known quantities I think um, and slowly work my way back up to bigger buddy reads and more in-depth and maybe more difficult reading material. You know what I mean? That kind of meaty, maybe meaty buddy reads. So I'm not going to name anybody because I don't want to either put that pressure on anyone else or create pressure on myself. So just know there's a bunch of you out there that I would love to read with at some point in the future, someday. And last is to tag your buddies and I will do exactly that and tag everyone I mentioned in this video and also people that I've done a buddy read with but it didn't get mentioned here because there's only so many questions. Heidi at my reading life you are first to mind in that respect. So I'd love to hear from everyone if you have any thoughts on what I said and also what is your ideal buddy read group size does and what kind of books are more suited for a smaller group versus a larger group? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.